Hi everyone, today I want to speak to you about a very important topic. In South Africa, we are seeing a lot of racial division because of this Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, we've seen what has happened in the USA, we've seen what happened uh, across the world, racial tensions increasing and, and a lot of sad things and very tragic things have happened. And a lot of emotion has been stirred. And today I want to speak to Christians in particular, but also South Africans in general, because I believe we need to discern the times and understand the context the, uh, within which this is happening. Remember, we are in, still in lockdown mode, so it has created a lot of internal tension uh, within communities, within households, within businesses, um, and it's caused a lot of um, fear and anxiety to a large extent. So when something like these racial tensions come in, it starts triggering emotions that is really harmful to society. So I want to quickly today address this and I want to bring in a biblical perspective so that we can discern and really respond with the Lord's heart. Now, one, one thing I just want to discern and, and, and just uh, draw a distinction is on the one hand, you've got the Black Lives Matter movement, but then you've got the Black Lives Matter principle. Now, it's sad to say that the whole emphasis on all lives matter is almost in opposition to black lives matter. And we understand that a lot of other cultures are, uh, you know, unhappy about the fact that now one racial group is elevated. What about the others? And, you know, this is typical of the enemy. His strategy is to divide and rule. He's done that from the Garden of Eden, uh, where he separated Adam and Eve through sin. He separated Adam and Eve from God through sin. And it's throughout history. His strategy is to divide and rule. So we as Christians must discern this. And we cannot allow the enemy to take the day and to just do what he does and kill, steal and destroy. So... What I'm saying is that, of course, um, in principle, um, uh, I, I can't see how one can support a Marxist movement, a Christian can support a Marxist movement that has socialistic underpinnings, like the Black Lives Matter movement. But the fact is, if we say all lives matter, we include black lives as well. So, so I think one must just separate this principle and say we're standing on the principle that all lives matter and especially black lives matter. Also, um, Indian lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Um, and that means uh, in Christ Jesus, our identity, we, we, we are a new creation in Jesus Christ. So that reality should take preeminence, especially for us as Christians. We cannot allow the enemy to use emotions, to use political rhetoric and all kinds of political correctness um, to divide us. There's no way we can allow this. So I want to appeal to Christians in South Africa that we change the dynamics so that we turn this into something that's good, something that brings healing to the nation. People, we have been given, the Bible says, a ministry of reconciliation. We are called to bring healing in society. We cannot allow the enemy to do what he does. The, the enemy is not some movement, actually. The enemy is the division. The enemy is the rupture in society, and we are called to heal society. So let me read the scripture, because this biblical context, I believe, it is what is key at a time like this. This comes from 2 Corinthians 5, from verse 18 to 21. So it says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their transpasses to them and has committed us to us the word of reconciliation. So he's committed to us because we've received forgiveness that we shall express forgiveness and uh, um, to, to commit to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. People, that's who we are, ambassadors of Christ. And through God, we're pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
For he made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And this is important for, for, for this moment in history, that us as Christians should express the heart and the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ to a broken community. We have a painful history past. We all know that. Now the enemy is using that to trigger certain emotions. And what he does is he, he brings opposing forces and we start fighting a battle. We hear things we don't like. We can't believe certain Christians say certain things. And he causes a lot of confusion. And what it does is it separates us, it divides us. And what happens? The enemy rules. That's how he conquers. So as God's people, I appeal to you, we need to stand together. Let's unite in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's allow his healing power that works through us to become the difference in society. Let's turn this whole thing upside down. In what the enemy intended to, to bring to, as bad, to destroy, God can turn into good, but he needs us as God's people. So let's speak a language of healing. Let's speak a language of drawing hearts together. And let's, let's deal with the pains of the past but in a way that expressed the heart of the Lord. Let's not allow division from this day forward. I appeal to you, and this is my prayer, that we stand in unity, because then God will bless our nation. The, the Word of God says, when brothers dwell together in unity, there the Lord commands His blessing. So let's do it. Let's not just be hearers of the Word, but let's be doers of the Word. In Jesus' name, amen.